Now your host for Clean Radio, Andrew and Judah. Well, welcome Judah. How are you doing this week? I'm great. Yeah? Happy, yeah, look, first of all, before we forget, most important thing, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's uh, yeah, well, we'll we're, see. we got an hour left. East Coast, though. Yeah, but it's still, they're going to be watching <laughs> it going. <laughs> you know both our mothers are going to be watching going, did they? So happy birthday, Ima, which is Hebrew for mother. Something I did not know. Yeah, Ima is Hebrew okay. and well. for mother, and Abba is Hebrew for father. Great. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is uh, Unlucky Show 13. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think we're going to actually have a very lucky show. It's like, who, th- who thought we'd make it that long? <laughs> <laughs> 13 weeks. 13 weeks. Yeah, already. I can't believe it. I'm very excited about our show tonight. we got a good show tonight. We do have a great show tonight. Yeah. It's all women. Except for us. Uh, except for us. I'm in as for Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, then again, Tom at uh, <laughs> our, local, our local gas station might have something to say about that, but... And no, I think it's also, but I, I, I think it's important, you know, because we're going to touch on a topic that was in the New York Times about anonymous. And I think there is something people don't really understand about addiction and all that stuff. And it's supposed to be fun. You know, you get sober, you're supposed to live a fun life. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't for people. You know, if I'm if I was miserable and I'm 13 years, almost 13 years, if I was miserable, what would be the point? Yeah, and I think I think the point is that you don't get sober just to stop being in pain. Right. You get sober so that you can live an active, fruitful life and enjoy, you know, what talents you have. And I think that's what separates that and therapy in a sense. Because therapy, when you go to therapy, the goal is obviously, but the therapist's job, I don't. Be- well, what do I know? But it's 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 that's where we we're, we're different from therapy. That's where 12 steps are different than should be. <laughs> well, all these things, I think, blend. And I think that not one is necessarily more important than the other at times. Um, certainly, medical intervention has its place and is can be primarily important if something's <clears throat> severely wrong. And I encourage everyone to always see a doctor first because they're the best trained to sort of triage what might be going on with people. Mm-hmm. But then uh, secondarily, there's a lot of therapeutic interventions below there. Um, the interesting thing about therapy is a lot of the work that actually occurs in therapy happens within the individual once they leave a therapeutic session. So it's the work they do within themselves that they've gotten out of being in therapy. It's, uh, you know, I'm not going to blow. That's actually a great point. I'm so just, you're, I'm just, get, you're just pointing out. Yeah, I'm just giving you props <laughs> that you actually. That's a great point. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you know. And then I think you know the fellowship stuff and twelve step social model um, is very important. I think that people being connected to a group of other like minded people, um, uh, they can support each other with a chronic uh, illness and, and disease of addiction and being able to get support within the community for that, um, and with friends and fellowship is is great. No, we were talking about that you and you know you got sober with Barry. And that you probably, you know, you and him, you know, that was important. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody's past different. And I think that everybody's type of addiction is different. And the concept that one size fits all is wrong. Um, and that uh, different people have different issues. I've uh, met people that were convinced they were addicts and alcoholics. Um, then, you know, they got on antidepressants and then Poof. they actually could go back to social drinking. So not that I'm actually encouraging people <laughs> that, that might be an AA to experiment with social drinking. But I think that, you know, there is a lot of misdiagnosis between drug abuse and alcohol abuse. And then when it actually progresses into the disease of addiction. Well, I think that's why it's pretty safe to say that people that drink that, you know, I'm one of the rare few that's, you know, just a drinker. Right. I think I'm a lot easier to diagnose and say, oh, he's an alcoholic. No, there's no doubt you're easier to diagnose. Right. No, <laughs> <laughs> on many levels. But you get what I'm saying. Like, it's like when somebody, heroin is a physically addicted drug, right? Anybody that does heroin will need heroin. Well, if, if they do it for a period of for time. For a period of time, right? right? Consistently. But an alcoholic, if, 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 if I drank every day for 30 days and I mm-hmm. wasn't an alcoholic, would I need it on day 31? Uh, most likely not. Right, but an alcoholic would need it on day 31. Um, not physically necessarily. It depends how much they were actually drinking, but certainly they'd be more predisposed to f- having a, a stronger psychological craving than someone that doesn't isn't sort of predisposed to alcoholism and the disease of alcoholism. The uh, number here is 877-8830-830. The number here is 877-8830-830. We have great show tonight. We have great guests. 
Yeah, we absolutely. We have uh, Susie McCoppin. Coppin, McCoppin. McCoppin. I'm going to get her name right before the end of the night, who's a writer and author. She, she's actually writes for Playboy.com. Ooh, baby. Yeah, and we'll have a lot of interesting stories with her. And then we have uh, Amber Tozer, who's a great comedian. She was on Last Comic Stan- uh, Standing before she got sober. So we're going to get to hear stories, I think, about doing comedy before she was sober on TV and then getting sober and how she's been able to be a successful comic since then. And I've known Susie for many and many years, and we're going to take a... Yeah, we're going to go out to break, and uh, uh, we'll bring in our guests. And uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the issue we were talking about. It was uh, in the New York Times today. They had an article about whether the second A and AA is necessary. I think it's going to be a very intriguing conversation. Well, since Bill Wilson, I'll just go to the break with this. Since Bill Wilson was voted by Time magazine as, I think, number two, second most influential man of the last century... I true? think there. I didn't yeah, know that. No. I think there goes anonymity. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, and Bill Wilson is the uh, if people that don't know is the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, the co-founders. Right. So, talk about anonymity, and let's we'll be right back on Clean Radio. Great. Welcome back to Clean Radio. It's Clean with a Guy. I'm here with Judah, and you can reach us at 877-8830-8830-877-8830. Something really funny. I'm on the phone with my mother the other day, and she, she needed that is my. That's funny. Huh? She, she, <laughs> yes, and uh, old baby. And so unusual. <laughs> yes, and she needed the e- my email address. So I was using. I was. I said, you know, it's Judah at Clean Center, and it's right. Judah with a K. I mean, I mean, Clean Center. Clean Judah, with a K. Clean, clean with a K, and she's like, yes, I listened to the show. <laughs> Are you going to give me the number now too? Uh, so the number here is eight seven seven eight eight thirty eight thirty. And we have our first guest in the studio. Ever or for the evening? No, for the evening. Oh, I'm so excited. Susie McCoppin, is, is that correct? Yes. yes. I'm always getting you O's and whatever. Yeah, he has incorrect. a hard time with names. I'm not good with names. It's we like one of these things. I'm, I'm terrible with names. And certain I have words. To like yeah. back. But your cock back, is huge. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're <laughs> right out the gate, baby. Uh, right? That's how I do. Wow. So, um, like, like so Susie, let's... So, yeah. so that you everyone... Here. Getting into. So <laughs> Susie does right? write for Playboy Radio. <laughs> right? But, so tell us about Playboy that, Susie. You work... You're a uh, writer? Yes, yes, indeed. And yes. you write for Playboy? Also true. Right. You want me to just be extemporaneous? Yes, please. Okay, but no cuss- no cursing? Yeah, well, we're, mm-hmm. It is radio. We're Go by the seven Our words. engineer's standing there yeah. with his finger on the button, so. Yeah. Can I say crap? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yes, you can say crap. Yeah. Crap is underrated as a swear word because it's just so ridiculous. You're bringing well, crap back. Comes, you know, where, you crap know where crap back. comes from, right? Talk to me. The Thomas Crapper booty? who invented the toilet. Oh, oh, oh. So... Well, what an homage right? to him. It is, right? Oh, that makes Isn't a lot that of nice? Sense. You invent the toilet and they make your last word after the duty. R- the duty. Yeah. 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 Um, so where was I? Duty. You're gonna tell what us do you about do? what you do. Oh, okay, right. So I, I wrote a book um with a girlfriend and we decided to uh send an excerpt to Playboy in the hopes of having it published. And they said, Oh, we love it, we want to give you your own column. Huh? So I'm awesome. Read between the lines. <laughs> um, and then, so they gave me the. <laughs> how dare you, sir? Um, they gave me my own column, and then that kind of turned in. That sort of morphed into like being an online personality. Right. I actually bought the Playboy with her first column, you know, because she asked me to. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right, because Judah does. Judah's cheap, so <laughs> yeah. for him to go out and well, buy something, it must have been and good. And not because I'm Jewish, <laughs> right? Because Just I have no you, money. <laughs> 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 just want to make sure people don't think that was an anti-Semitic joke. I just happen to be cheap because I have no money. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. Stereotypes are there for a reason. Oh. 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 <laughs> anyway, <That's laughs> getting back. Yes. <laughs> Awkwardness. Uh, so, uh, I love Jews. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was, gra- it was a great article, by the way. And I read the magazine, and it was. It was all I really did with that Playboy. Enriching. And now it's under your mattress. And now it is saved. For, you know, when I was talking to him before the show, I was. You ever see that show, Porn, porn Stars, with a <laughs> yeah, P A W? 
Your mom's on. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the other one. <laughs> she's on hardcore porn, uh, porn, <laughs> because that show is filmed out of Detroit, and, Susie, and Susie's at, at Susie's from Detroit. Out of Detroit myself. Oh. And uh, oh. you see what you remember from? Oh. I've known Susie for twelve years. Go way back. And uh, how could I didn't think anybody could have known Judah for twelve years? It's when I first got sober. I didn't say we kept in touch. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would periodically <laughs> bump into Susie. Right. At, I used to call her Julie for the first four years I knew her. And she never corrected you. Uh, um. Mm. Just I think she had given up. I, 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 I was. I was so. I was so. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was so. Uh, you know, a ghost Just to painful. her. Anyways. No, you were not. Yeah. He was such a boob to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny because for the last five minutes I've been thinking, how do I describe Judah, early Judah, without swearing? And but I came is, up with boob. Boob is perfect. Thanks. And and this is fascinating. Oh, good. I'm glad you're yeah. fascinating. I absolutely <laughs> want to know what Judah was yeah, like. Yeah, he was just. A, can you say uh, D O U C H E? Uh, well, yeah, we, I well, think we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, no, they have commercials that talk about douching, so why can't you call yeah, somebody? Uh, yeah, you know, we're, right. I think we're, we're marginally cutting yes. the line here. That's what we do. So right? yes, I was, I was, I was, well, I was, I had a minute sober. I had and, I, and I was nothing but pleasant. Yes. I think he anticipated I did. that I was an a-hole. I did. Right. And and preemptively, even in the face of contrary action, uh -huh. and um, you know, and. We've worked through our differences. I think that's a great. That's a that is that that sums it up. Yeah, that, I was I being it. preemptive, without a doubt. You when you first get sober, you live in you know you're, you know you could be a little fearful, yeah. right? You don't have alcohol anymore to talk to a girl. Not that right. it worked when I was, but <laughs> to, to even just like think numb you can, it wasn't yeah. there <laughs> to numb the pain, right? <laughs> Well, Susie, we've been having this ongoing debate whether or not Judah's girlfriend really exists or not. So. Oh, yeah. People say that about my boyfriend, like Loch Ness Monster. We should oh, yeah? get them together. Yeah, yeah. we should. They should. They should. <laughs> the fake Anson. <laughs> Fanson. Fanson. So, so do you think Judah's uh, girlfriend's real? Yeah, it was weird because you mentioned it back there. I was like, yeah. what? Right. Who? <laughs> I mean, not that he, I mean, I'd hit it. Yeah. But I've just, in all the years I've known him, I've never known him to be betrothed to another. Oh. Ah. It's yes. a long time. Yes. <laughs> Your mother's gonna love this show. My mother know? loves this show. show 13. Every week, every week, it's like I'm getting like you know, ther you know, I'm getting a therapy. Therap um, right? People are dissecting. <laughs> Today we have a beautiful woman sitting next to me, talking about me being a boob. Yeah, <laughs> how like, she's Who is that girl? How she's never seen me with she anybody. She was not Jewish. I don't care for her. <laughs> she was not Jewish. I don't want her in this house. And uh, oh, this is great. You're talking about me being cheap. I have. If even if I if, let's say I don't have a girl from which I do, <laughs> I would never get one after this show. Oh, you might lose one. I might lose show. one after the show. Tommy at the gas station, you are my best shot. <laughs> is she from the Niagara Falls area? Yes, she is. And I get the Breakfast Club reference. Hello, oh, yeah. Excellent. Wow, excellent. you two are just. We way got that. Too we got that. It was good. It's very it's, 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 That's a. Because I always bust that out, and I always wonder if people I, get it. You know, last week I was at a party busting out Breakfast Club references, and nobody was getting it. <laughs> you gotta, you I'm like, did you, I'm like, did you tie Larry Lester's butt cheeks? Nobody got it. Come on. And nobody. How old was everyone? Fifteen. No, they were the same. But I, it's I don't know. Me and you obviously <laughs> have right a here. deeper connection. You know when the tape came off, some skin came off. <laughs> you know that. It's two <laughs> heads, yeah. two heads. Me hitting you, you hitting the floor. <laughs> um, he was not playing. And no, because yeah. you know what it was? It was a girl named Claire, and uh, she was doing the. And every time I meet a Claire, I always want to say that's a fat chick name. name. Oh my God, Mary Mary. Oh, and I uh, was hurt. And uh, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know, I'm having trouble with the show already. This is our 13th show, right? This is our 13th show. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I bought the article. She's an amazing writer. Oh, thank you, sir. And uh, I was impressed. I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have expected less? In um, Hollywood, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the column and what you do with Playboy. What do you write about mostly? Sex, sex problems, sex issues? Well, I met, just, I, I met with the... Uh, boss for lack of a better word not Hugh but the guy who was like taking over right and he was coming over from Maxim and he wanted to bring in this whole like new re regime uh -huh. so he's like I got it we're gonna call you party girl yeah. and I was like are you sure dead uh -huh. on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it, and then I wrote an article about this because um for years I did a nightlife column for one of the tabloids ah. and my job was to hang out in clubs and spy on everyone but i could never get into any club like one time <laughs> one time i waited for four hours and somebody was very rude to you one time somebody we both know well doesn't a lot of the good dirt happen oh. like in line though like you know like people who can't get in that are famous and that's what i always see like on 
The oh, five, yeah, like the five Reed. minutes I watched right, TMZ. No, no, they, that, they yeah, do that in minutes. New York. That's a New York thing. That's a New York thing? Yeah, here, no, they will, like, roll out the red carpet for, like, you know, like, just right. anybody that Laden, might anyone remotely relevant. Totally. They just, <laughs> 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 That's a death carpet this week. But 